All right, I could sing all day. I think we could do that. <laughs> hello, 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 everybody. How are you today? I see all everyone saying hello in the chat. It's good to see you all. It's good to be here with you. Hi, Tanya. I like that one. Hello, hello. Okay, what are you guys? What are you drinking this morning, everybody? Nicole, what do you have in your cup? I have hot chocolate. Hot I chocolate. Yeah. All right. I don't, do, I don't do coffee. It's a bit of a regret. But yeah, yeah. Actually, I actually don't do coffee either. I've got a chai this morning. Well, this evening for me, but um, coffee, coffee. A lot of people are drinking coffee today. Yeah, I've also got some dihydroxide and dihydrogen monoxide too. Oh so. yeah, yeah. Me too. In my ridiculously sized cup. <laughs> uh, cool. Sparkling water, peppermint coffee. That's great, guys. Mm. I'm glad everyone's hydrated and here with us today. All right, introducing your clicked coach with us today. We have Nicole. Would you like to speak a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, uh, hello, I'm Nicole. I'm in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, it's eight o'clock in the morning, which is a perfectly respectable time. I'm sure some people are all over the world at silly o'clock. But um, so I grew up in the not for profit sector in the UK. I worked for a variety of different organizations and came across Salesforce in 2008 when I was managing the choice and selection and implementation of a new CRM and kind of went, oh my God, it's so good. And then uh, moved to Australia in 2009 and have been doing Salesforce consulting ever since. Awesome, well, we are so happy to have you here. Uh, if we have not met yet, I'm Taylor. I will be facilitating and hosting today's session. All right, here's our agenda. Uh, we're gonna go over the overview a little bit of an intro, then our live walkthrough, and then we will have time for Q&A at the end. Uh, here are our core clicked principles. We are here to learn from each other. Um, this is a safe place to try. Uh, this session is a shadow session, but just as, as an overall outing rule here at Clicked, um, we want you to try new things. We want you to reach out of your comfort zone. That's how you grow and that's how you learn. And we are here to have fun. Um, everyone says it, but we really need it. Um, we can learn new things and we can have a great time while we do it. So what is a shadow session? A shadow, shadow session, if I can say it, uh, is the opportunity to watch one of our clicked coaches go through a common Salesforce scenario uh, and you will have the opportunity to learn and grow and also ask questions. Um, you can throw those questions in the Q&A section or if you have a more in-depth question and you'd like to come up on stage and talk it out, uh, feel free to raise your hand and we can do that as well. All right, let's talk about Salesforce Nonprofit Cloud. I'll let you go ahead and uh, speak to that a little bit, yeah. Great. So um, I've got a bit of a slide deck. I love a good slide deck. Um, so if you want to stop sharing, I will grab the screen. Uh, let's share the entire screen and I'll jump into presentation mode. All righty. It's not gone full screen, but I think that works for people. Let's try that. There we are. All right. So. Um, so this session is about not-for-profits, right? It's about all the non-profit or the for-purpose sector. It has a, a variety of different terms around the world. Um, and it's really an introduction to uh, one of the biggest sectors that actually Salesforce has around the world. So quick question. Um, how many people, and you can thumbs up emoji, how many people have worked actually for a not-for-profit so work as a member of staff how many people have worked for a not-for-profit brilliant uh, sorry was the united states of america a reference to a not-for-profit or was that a location anyway um how many people have done a um uh, a salesforce project with a not-for-profit or volunteered at a not-for-profit cool all right so there's some people out there who've got some experience what about donating to a not-for-profit, financial, volunteering, brilliant. So um, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about 
what not-for-profits are, although I will cover it off in, in briefly because I think it is important. It's a very misunderstood sector. Um, then I want to talk a little bit about the timeline, uh, I suppose, of product development in the Salesforce world uh, for not-for-profits, and then do a bit of a demo um, of the nonprofit cloud. Um, so what's the full purpose sector? Well, I, so I call, I use the term for purpose um, and for profit, right? Um, not many sectors describe themselves as what they're not. So I find non-profit and not for profit as being a little bit uh, negative, I suppose, but it doesn't really matter, for purpose. So what, what's a for purpose organization? Well, it's, it's mission driven, right? Whereas a for profit organization is profit driven. Now they're not always successful. Some organizations make a loss, but they are explicitly there to make profit. Um, for purpose organizations have a board um, and then staff underneath. So um, stakeholders, a uh, CEO and, and various members of staff, whereas a for profit company has shareholders or an owner, right? And a for purpose is, is there to deliver social impact. Um, whether that's solving a social problem, um, bringing community together, uh, you know, protecting the environment, whatever that is, it has a social impact, whereas for profits have a financial impact. And that financial impact is often, in my view, anyway, fairly limited um, in its in its function. Um, now, the next one's about how organizations get their money. And it's, this is this is one where there's a bit of a blurring of the line now. So most people think that not-for-profits get a lot of money from donations. That's true. Um, but they also get grants from government um, bodies, but also from philanthropic organizations as well. And the thing that is causing a little confusion sometimes is that they also get paid to do things, right? So here in Australia, for example, um, if you have a disability, um, you can uh, go to an organization and get support for that disability. And those organizations could be not-for-profit organizations, for-purpose organizations, or they can be for-profit organizations. The model is still the same. I go and get a an hour of speech therapy, and I'm either paying a for-purpose organization or I'm paying a for-profit organization, but both same process. Both organizations have to produce annual reports. They both have to be accountable to slightly different people. Um, for purpose sector organizations are accountable to the public um, and I suppose to the government that they, that they are um, regulated by. Um, for profit organizations are typically more accountable or care more perhaps about shareholders and, and so on and public perception. And the thing that I actually enjoy most the difference that I enjoy most is that for purpose organizations are very much about partnership and collaboration, whereas for profit organizations tend to be more about competition. So and a, a really good example of that is when we run an event for our customers and prospects in the for purpose sector, we get way more people turning up, sharing their ideas, their use of Salesforce, um, you know, networking and collaborating. In the for-profit sector, we get fewer people turning up and they're much more reluctant to share their, you know, commercial secrets. I quite like the fact that, that there's partnership and collaboration. I think that's um, that's, a, that's a nice thing. Um, and any other differences that people might have come across or, or thought about or any surprises there? Does, does that all make sense? Some good Not comment. seeing anything in the chat, but we have a bunch of thumbs ups along the bottom. So awesome. All right. Um, so a couple of things that people often find surprising. So um, approximately 10 percent. And this is like I'm speaking from the experience I've had in the UK, Australia, the US. Um, so, you know, a fairly small subsection of, of, of countries um, with some fairly similar um look and feel to them but it's a large sector in most countries the not-for-profit sector or the for-purpose sector is a large sector approximately so for example here in Australia um, about 10 percent of employees work for for-purpose organizations um, for 
for purpose people are nice. I, well, I would agree. Um, and about 12 million out of 130 million employed people um, in the US work for for purpose organizations. Now, that's not the same across the world, of course. I mean, there are some countries um, that don't have a not for profit sector or for purpose sector at all, right? It just it doesn't make sense to them. Um, communist or Marxist or countries, um, countries where there's a big social um, safety net, etc. The, the proportion is much lower. Um, but in terms of revenue here in Australia, $190 billion in revenue in the not-for-profit sector last year in Australia, uh, $2.4 trillion in the US, around 6%. So they're a massive contributor to the, um, to the GDP of, a, of most countries. Now, the, the thing that I think people often get surprised about is that only 7% 7 roughly, again, really generic figures here, um, of funding revenue for not-for-profits comes from donations. Most people think it's the vast majority of the way that, that organisations get funded. But because of those grants um, and the fee-for-service stuff that I talked about previously, donations actually for a lot of organisations is a very, very small amount. So you can't just say, well, I'm good at fundraising. I know how to do a fundraising solution in Salesforce and say that, um, you know, your job is done. Because, yes, there are a lot of organizations out there that raise a lot of money. And that's great. You can go work with them. Um, but there's a whole heap of others that don't even fundraise at all. All righty. Um, so let's have a think about the nonprofit cloud timeline. So this is a little, I think, potentially a little confusing, right? So way back when, and one of the things that I first loved about Salesforce was its um, commitment to the, to the for purpose sector from day one. Um, you know, Mark Benioff, the 1% model, etc. right? Like from the get go, he has made it very clear that this is a big sector for him. Now you can be cynical and say that's a good commercial choice, or you can be, you know, nice and fluffy and go, well, that's because he's a nice guy, whatever. So um, 2011, uh, well, 2000, the first, uh, the, I think it was the 10th employee was, was recruited and, and they were to head up the, the foundation side of, of Salesforce or the full purpose side of Salesforce. So that was a, a commitment from, from pretty much from day one. Um, but not long after, you know, 10 years in, they, they decided they needed a, a, a product, something that they could go to market with. Um, and compete with the likes of, for example, Razor's Edge, um, which is one of the major fundraising solutions out there. That then kind of gradually morphed into what most people now know in the not-for-profit not sector, which is the Non-Profit Success Pack or the NPSP. And that's been around for a long time um, and has had a lot of iterations, a lot of improvements, very robust solution. But... Um, not kind of built on the core platform, right? There's, sure, you can turn the MPSP on and, and it's there, you don't have to install um, products um, from the App Exchange, but you can. And so last year, they launched the Nonprofit Cloud. Confusingly, a very similar name to the Nonprofit Success Pack. And also, for many, the Nonprofit Success Pack was often called Nonprofit Cloud. So it's a little confusing. Um, but Nonprofit Cloud is a new, completely new product. Um, some really fundamental differences in how they're architected. So, for example, Nonprofit Success Pack uses the standard accounts contacts model and creates households. Nonprofit Cloud is based on person accounts. Um, now, there, I did spot a question. The NPSP and NPC were synonymous. Right. Yes, it's confusing, right? So there was a time for about a year or two where people were using the term nonprofit cloud, even though they were talking about the nonprofit success pack. I don't know the history of that. I don't quite understand where that came from. But they are two really different solutions. Um, and you'll see, <clears throat> you'll see when I do the demo, they look quite different and they function quite differently. So yeah, person accounts, for the nonprofit cloud. I don't like person accounts. Um, and uh, but the reason for the move is that um, 
moving down the track, people can make much better use of the core platform functionality. For example, predictive AI capability that's coming in 2024. So there is a, there is a, a good reason to make the move, um, but it is a very, very different solution and a big learning curve for those of us in the sector over the last year. What's easier to work with MPC or M? Well, change is hard. Right now, I would say MPSP because I know it. Um, but nonprofit cloud, yeah, you know, you, you, you've got to learn it. Um, I would say, generally speaking, MPSP is a, a simpler solution to just turn on and work with. Um, and they both of them will coexist. Salesforce have not yet said they are stopping support or development on the nonprofit success pack. I'm going to guess that's not going to last forever, but there are something like 50, 60,000 organizations around the world using MPSP. So it's not going anywhere. And we are still recommending it for small organizations that might only have one or two fundraising people on their team um, because it is much quicker to just, yeah, turn it on, tweak a few settings. Within half a day, you've got a core platform up and running that you can then adjust uh, over the course of the project. Whereas with the nonprofit um, cloud, there's a bit more initial setup to do and a bit more to get it to the point that the MPSP is at right now. It was only, the fundraising part was only released um, towards the end of last year, whereas program management was released earlier on in 2023. Um, so we just have two quick questions. Uh, Nicole, can you repeat that? Nonprofit cloud uses person accounts. What does the starter pack use again? So yeah, nonprofit, nonprofit cloud uses person accounts. Um, nonprofit success pack has um, what is called, well, there's a couple of models you can use, but the most common one is the household account model, but it's basically built on accounts and contacts. So you have a, have a contact, you create a contact first, and that automatically goes off and creates a household for that contact. So every person has two records in Salesforce and a contact and account. If you then get to know more people within that household, you can add them to that household. But one of the challenges with that model is that you don't always know. You don't always know who is part of a household and actually what defines a household. Just because people live at the same address doesn't mean they're part of a house. They could be shared housemates, right? Um, just because people don't live at the same address doesn't mean they're not part of a family. So that's always been a bit of a tricky thing with the nonprofit success pack. Okay. And then Nidhi is asking, um, what is the purpose of the nonprofit cloud? Who is it for? And does it have accounts and contacts? It does have accounts and contacts. Um, you'll see when I do the demo that it, it definitely does. <laughs> so I would say about a year and a half ago when Salesforce started briefing partners on the change that was coming, um, I was like, say what now? What's the point, right? And it took me quite a while to get my head around the purpose of the change. And I think it's still something that I'm kind of waiting to be convinced on, right? Partly because the, the initial setup is, is, is so much more uh, complex. So why? And I, I, if I was to put my Salesforce hat on, not my slightly cynical British Salesforce partner hat on, um, the roadmap for nonprofit cloud is next level clever, right? It's making use of core features, core platform components that are available to other clouds like health cloud or financial services cloud, right? It's things that are being developed for other industries can now be used by the nonprofit cloud or the not for purpose industry that wasn't necessarily terribly easy to do with the nonprofit success pack. For example, let's see if I can remember this example. 
Um, if you think about disaster relief organizations or rapid response organizations like, um, um, you know, Médecins Sans Frontières or the Red Cross or whatever that mobilize quickly to respond to emergencies, they don't need Nonprofit Success Pack. Nonprofit Success Pack is all about fundraising. Doesn't enable volunteer management, doesn't enable um, service delivery or um, scheduling or anything like that, right? Whereas Nonprofit Cloud does, but it also can bring in components from the service industry, right? So lessons learned and, and things built for other industries. That is, I believe, the, the, the rationale, the why. Cool. I think that was very helpful. Thanks for going into that. All righty. So um, let's do a bit of a demo. So this is at a really high level and in my rather, you know, chunky architectural diagram stuff, what is what we anyway typically deliver for organizations. So MPSP or the nonprofit cloud, sometimes with Pardot, sometimes with MailChimp, Campaign Monitor and Integration, um, and some widgets, some components that we've built uh, out because we know organizations in Australia typically do things like this, right? So we've built some reusable components. And nonprofit cloud, as I say, can be used for fundraising, it can be used for program management, case management, so particularly for organizations that deliver services to, in to, to individuals. Um, and of course, you've got the marketing component here. What my view is, anyway, is that, uh, and I think Salesforce are kind of on the same page, um, is that Salesforce as a platform is not a donation capturing solution, right? It's not a solution that creates an online page where someone can go enter their credit card details and make a donation. It used to be. Used to, in the US, they used to have a solution called Elevate that did that. And there are a number of app exchange products that do that. I don't think that's best practice. And there's a couple of reasons I don't think that's best practice. First of all, as a not-for-profit with limited resources, I don't think you should give two hoots what payment gateway is processing your donations. I don't think you should be worrying about PCI compliance beyond the bare minimum. And I don't think you should be spending time and effort on a roadmap of innovation that donors expect, right? Introducing things like Apple Pay or um, being able to, you know, vary donations and amounts and so on. So our recommendation is always to use a third party solution like Raisley, go fundraise, fundraise in. There's a whole bevy of platforms out there that provide that online experience. And then we integrate those into Salesforce using a, an Australian based solution called Move Data. It's a separation of duties, right? Separation of responsibilities. Raisley, or whichever solution you want to use, is committed as an organization. It has development resources, funding, et cetera, to be leading the way when it comes to online donation platforms. I, when people ask me about this, when not-for-profits ask me about this, I always say, do you have 15 developers that you're gonna dedicate to building awesome donor experiences? And they look at me and they go, no. I say, well, Raisley does, right? They are fundraising, online fundraising experts, use their platform as for the purposes that it was meant for, and use Salesforce as a CRM. And then usually there's something else, right? There's usually a website that might have some forms on it that you can use form assembly for or form stack or gravity forms and integrate, you know, whatever the, the thing is, there might be a finance solution that you want to integrate to, or um, maybe they've already got a, a portal they want to integrate to rather than using experience cloud, that sort of thing, right? So there's usually some other stuff going on. Any questions about that? Awesome. All right. So what's the story? So we've got John Smith, who works for Made Up um, for Purpose Organization. 
and he's a development officer. So his job is to um, go identify donors to, to, to work with and increase their, their fundraising revenue giving. Then we've got Vanessa Zimmerman, Zimmerman, who's a major donor prospect. So she's already engaged with the organization and um, she's made some donations. So I'm just going to take you through a bit of a demo. Let me just uh, switch screens here. There we go. All right, let's make that big. All right, so um, this is the nonprofit cloud, not nonprofit success pack. This is new and improved. Um, and the you know, homepage pretty similar, right? We, we can choose what to put on here, what components to have. We've got a report, we've got some tasks, we've got some campaigns, awesome. Um, if I go in and take a look at, um, uh, let's take a look at some contacts. And Vanessa, so we've got some cool features here that, that are, you know, again, part of the platform, right? So allow us to, um, to do some clever stuff around who's not had an activity recently. Bear in mind, you know, demos, right? This is all made up data and it's not much of it. So um, bear with me. But let's go look at Vanessa, right? So John, the development officer, has been tasked with looking at Vanessa and trying to uplift her from being a kind of sporadic one-off donor to a major donor. And so he, he can come in here and he can take a look at her record. And if you've seen the nonprofit success pack before, you'll see some similarities and some differences, right? So on the nonprofit success pack, you've got some roll up summary fields that summarize things like total donations amount, total number of donations, first donation, last donation, all these clever things. This is now driven by a different uh, core platform solution called the data processing engine and are displayed here uh, in various components. And you can set up the data processing engine to summarize pretty much anything you want, okay? So there's some giving summary here, total gifts, she's made four of them. Um, she's not got any recurring giving going on. She's made two gifts this year, um, totaling 500. The last one was only five days ago. So that's what's prompted John to come in and go, oh, she's, She's a bit interested because the last donation was $500, which is a significant jump from previous, right? So you can put in place some flows that go, hang on, this is a, a recent donation that's higher than a certain amount. Let's let's create a task for John to have a look. Um, we've got the usual activities thing. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. So the nonprofit uh, cloud has a thing called interaction summaries and activities. I'll be honest with you, not many people are sure of the difference between the two. There's some technical differences like interaction summaries aren't archived or uh, removed after X number of however longs, but there's conversation in the partner channel of when do you use which one? So right now I've stripped interaction summaries out of my demos. I'm like, I don't understand the difference. I'm not gonna confuse my clients with that information. We'll figure it out eventually, right? Um, does the MPC come with the power of us? Yes, so still has the 10 free licenses, still has discounted licenses. It is more expensive if you're paying for additional licenses than the nonprofit success bank. Alrighty, what else is this? the same. Um, I mean, you've still got all of the usual fields, right? And you can add things in, um, of course. So the same sort of page layouty stuff. You've got this cool little, oh, where's it gone? Sorry, this cool little widget here of life events, which I think was cribbed from the health cloud, but I could be wrong. Um, and you can change these and add them. So as you get to know your donors, you can put things in here, right? Um, this is actually my timeline because I have no um, imagination. And you've got these thing called interest tags. Now this is a work in progress because these interest tags are great, except you can't report on them and they're not very easy to search for. So they're, they're a work in progress. Can you please provide some summary on how to populate the donor giving summary in NPC? Okay, sorry. So these are all calculated. These are automatically calculated 
by the data processing engine every night. So every night, this solution will go and look at the most recent donations and gifts that have been made and update these figures. And you can remove sections, add in sections, etc. You can, um, there's a show more component where you can, you know, best gift year, she's being soft, recognized through a donation for someone else, etc. right? So you can, you can add some stuff. Uh, what else have we got here? So, so the, there's another interesting difference. So, nonprofit success pack used opportunities, right, for donations, um, both ones that have been made and ones that you're trying to get, right? Um, nonprofit cloud uses gifts. Now, here's a here's here's a so one of the sales fixed values is open and honest, transparent communication. I'm still learning what the difference is and how they're connected to each other. I haven't quite worked that out yet because from a reporting perspective, I want to report on one object, right? So I'm still working that out. And from a campaign perspective, how do I get these values associated to the campaign that they were made against? Opportun gifts aren't associated to a campaign. Opportunities are. So I'm still working that out. I've got a theory, but, you know... So we can see some, there's some gift transactions. She's been making gifts. Oh, let's sort by date. That's a better idea, isn't it? So she's been making donations up and down a bit. And then suddenly, boom, five days ago, she donated 500 bucks. Wow, where did that come from? So that's what's flagged John's interest. So you can come in here and have a little bit of shifty round, do a bit of research and decide whether to reach out to Vanessa to make a more significant um, donation. We can look at relationships. So again, in the nonprofit success pack, you still had relationships, but they were managed slightly differently and visualized slightly differently. So what we can have here is this kind of more hierarchical structure. So we've got Vanessa, who is part of the Maya household. Maybe she's married to a Maya. I don't know. Or a Maya. Uh, oh, yeah, look, we can see that Tom is her husband. Okay, so she's part of the Mayer household. But she's also part of the Mayer Foundation. Now, here in Australia, um, there's a department store called Mayer, and Sydney Mayer was a rich guy, and he's got a foundation. Anyway, so she's, um, oh, she's a board member on the Mayer Foundation. They make donations to not-for-profits. That's interesting, right? So I'm adding this information in as I'm doing that research. Um, all righty, what else have we got? Campaigns. So these are fairly standard. Nothing's changed here, I don't think. We can see that she's donated to the capital campaign. So maybe we're raising some funds for a new building or a new machine or, or whatever. But she's also attended a couple of events. Um, so she's she's engaged, right? This is good stuff. I'm, I'm liking this. And I can come in here. Um, and this is something we've added and not yet finished because they don't look nice. But we can um, do things like track. Uh, so this is something that major donor managers do. They come in and they look at people's profiles on LinkedIn, social media, stuff, right? And they go, is there a connection to the organization? Yeah. So she's, I would say she's a, maybe she's an infrequent donor, right? What interest does she have? Well, she's interested in the cause um i would say she's interested but they don't know our organization very well yet does she have the ability to donate this is always the hard one to estimate right you don't know what somebody earns you don't know what disposable income they've got um there are ways in the us of uncovering this information but not here in australia for example so this is a guesswork right we can go well I'm going to say, given, given, I've looked at LinkedIn, she's got a good job. I'm going to say, China can tell from social media, she doesn't have kids, she's got some money. But I'm going to be a bit conservative about it, right? So I can fill in these fields, and that will give her an overall score. And using that score, I can then decide who to prioritize in my list of potential major donors. Now, if you remember back to the, um, slide deck the timeline in june 2024 and later on in the year 
there are some predictive analytics that are going to come out that are built into Salesforce that will um, use AI to determine some of this stuff, right? Not necessarily the likelihood of becoming a major donor, um, but certainly likelihood of donating um, or that, that sort of thing. We'll, we'll, we'll start to see scores added on here. There are also solutions like uh, that use AI to predict if somebody is likely to become a major donor, um, stop being a regular giver, um, likelihood of donating to the next appeal, all of those sorts of things that can look at data in Salesforce and return a value onto somebody's record. All righty. Um, what else shall I show you? Uh, let's have a look. So, again, well, I, I guess most of you are familiar with campaigns. As I say, they're very similar. Um, they can be used we for do, events. Yeah, we do have a bunch of questions in the chat if, if you think it's a good time mm. for me to bring some of those up. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Okay. Karina is asking, I'm associated with a company that uses nonprofit cloud. I've never asked them about that. Why would a company use nonprofit cloud instead of sales? Cloud? Oh, do you know what? That's a jolly good question. I would say if they were a fundraising organization, so if they did any fundraising at all, they would definitely use nonprofit success pack or nonprofit cloud. If they were an organization that delivered programs and services to people. So, um, an aged care organization that um, runs education sessions or supports families who've got people in aged care or um, they work with refugees or asylum seekers, you know, so organizations that work with people definitely use nonprofit cloud because that's the, the, the key component of, of the solution. Organizations that there are completely different organizations out there, like we're working with an organization at the moment that supports young people with mental health challenges and they've gone with health cloud right so their model of delivery it's not about fundraising it's not about programs it's about tracking a health record of somebody so health cloud is the is the obvious choice cool uh sabrina's asking does npc integrate with softwares like iwave and classy um so i've come across classy before not come across mm -hmm. iwave um, I would say uh, my general answer to does Salesforce integrate with stuff and MPC, Salesforce, same thing, right? Um, the answer is always yes, right? It's not dependent necessarily on Salesforce. It's dependent on the other solutions. There is, I believe, a standard integration, a pre-built integration to Classy. I don't know about iWave. I always do a quick Google when I'm in sales calls on things like that. <laughs> okay. Um... Could you please provide some guidance on how to populate the donor giving summary in NPC? Sure, and I can try and get geeky. I will um, preface that by saying I haven't done any hands-on building of stuff in Salesforce for a while. That is not my role anymore. But so I can tell you that uh, there is a flow. Well, there's a bunch of flows, but there is a flow that, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Donor gift summary roll-ups. So this flow um, triggers the data processing engine to run every night. And the data processing engine, it's going to take a while, isn't it? The data processing engine has a bunch of rules and um, processes built into it that update those fields, right? So all this does is trigger um, an action. We see, I don't know much about flows. It's doing a thing with the data processing <laughs> engine. And all I know is that when you turn on the nonprofit cloud or you, you, you launch nonprofit cloud, you have to activate this flow so that the um, data processing engine triggers every night. Now I can data processing engine this is the bit this is so this is what's when they launched this they said this is great mpc is great because you can use the data processing engine you can use omniscript you can use a whole bunch of other stuff that is core platform that you couldn't really do with an mpsp and i went never heard of the data processing engine 
I've done Omniscript things before because I did a bit of velocity stuff before it was acquired. Ooh, right? So st sharp, steep learning curve. So here's a, um, a data processing, processing engine. Um, there's a bunch of things that are, um, you know, set up. And the standard one, don't a gift summary. I've cloned it because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, but there's also things like um, uh, uh, stuff around the programs that are managed within Salesforce. So there's a lot of roll-ups and things. But this is what is supposed to be good about this is that you can create any kind. It's like a batch process. You can create and set these up. And people who've been working in the sector or in other industries who know data processing engine can now work in the not-for-profit sector, which is they you know, couldn't do before. Okay. <laughs> How do you fix collisions, implications, oh. money laundering and terrorism? Is there system capability for this? Oh, that is a that is a really good question. And I would say that is probably more, uh, yeah. How do you do that? Um, gosh, that's a big question, isn't it? And I would say it's, it's probably made up of not just the technology component, but also the business process component, right? Well, um, yeah. So, for example, I... I um, uh, I play in an orchestra. We use Salesforce to track our donations. We don't get any. And then all of a sudden last year, we got three $10 donations all of a sudden. And I was like, ooh. And then our web person said, yeah, they're just, they're, they're just, they're just people trying to check that cards work, scammers. Um, you'll, that money will probably be recouped from Stripe. But it never was, right? So... I, I don't I don't know that there's one simple solution. I do know that the um one, this is another reason why uh this oh I've lost my uh, lost my presentation. That separation of state, separation of responsibilities is really important, right? Because if you're using a, a solution like Classy or Raisley or whatever, they are then kind of responsible for those online transactions, the security of those online transactions, the valid validity of those online transactions. You have some responsibility as an organization, but there's a slight distance between you and, and that potentially fraudulent um, activity. How can a donor be associated with an organization um, working in an organization that is a donor and is a personal donor? Not sure I 100% understand the question. Happy if you want to come up and have a chat. Um, I think what you mean is, can people have multiple connections to an organization? Right, so you um, can be a donor, I'll you can around. work for an organization. Hi, um, I just wanted to clarify uh, that, um, you know, when the donor is also working in an organization, like how, what is the relationship? Like how will you see the relationship there? Because right. it only showed like family relationships, right? You can add, you can add to that. So, um, so you can add in, so you can say, so this is a relationship to an account, right? So you've got a household, yeah. which, which is, you know, like, a collection of individuals let's think about what an account is it's a collection of individuals right that could be a family that could be an organization like the maya foundation i can add a relationship to um the place i work right which i don't think is in here but let's um it's, it's, what, what is in here <laughs> okay let's see uh, it's not okay like, ooh, no, it'll be an it. it'll be a business account right yeah, not exactly. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you can yeah. create those relationships. So let me create this. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's all done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we've got two other people that would like to come up on stage and ask questions. So I'm going mm. to bring up Sinduja first. Um, hi. hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. So um, I have a question regarding um, 
just you show the like uh, how to populate the donor giving summary right so if you are scheduling on like a, um in a flow that you're using data process engine mm -hmm. so how it works when we are when we are updating or giving any new gifts like a pledge or any kind of gifts it it it's not going to populate on that time right it takes no no it's an overnight to... it's an overnight process I, I you can schedule it to run more frequently but most not for profits don't need yeah it yeah we, we can schedule the flow like daily or yeah. anytime we pick but but instantly it's not going to populate on the screen right it's it not, showed not up... instantly no not instantly okay okay yeah. that's what my question is because is it um i mean is that a good option like uh, how it works like if you if you are giving gifts or like count and everything it takes one day to i mean and refresh it right so yes. is it no, a good it, good thing like look this, right? yeah look i i would say is it a good thing um i think salesforce has made the decision that it's a good thing <laughs> the nonprofit success pack roll up summaries sure they were mm -hmm. instant right okay. um, or, or well even then, right, if you imagine you've got, um, if you're a big not-for-profit mm -hmm. and you've got 50,000 donors and you send out mm -hmm. an appeal and you get 20,000 donations back, the processing power of Salesforce is going to yeah. kind of slow down, right? So it's, I don't think it's a problem. Okay. As okay. long as organizations understand that it's an overnight process. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand your perspective. Um, I'm just why I ask this means if it's flow means we can get an update in, um, instantly, right? So we are using the flow, but it takes I, we need to schedule a date. That's why I'm, I'm asking it's this a, question. But, but I got your answer. Yes. Yeah, it's a two step process. The flow mm -hmm. triggers the yes. data processing engine. You could mm -hmm. schedule the flow to be more frequent, but then you'd be potentially, um, you know, yeah, killing the, the processing. Yes. And, and for what yeah. I, I get it. I yes, guess. that is it, right? Um, Jana has got the point right there. It's a pain in the bum if you're testing and building a demo or, or you know, building a real oh. life solution and you want to test it. Yeah, you, you know, but you can go right. in and manually run the run the thing. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and one more thing. Um for the relationship, we have like party um party to relationship and then and, and also like groups right we have two ways so from the group we are not um assign a individual like uh, like take it as a household there is a family with phone members the son is going to some school son and daughter going to some elementary school mm -hmm. in the group we are not assigning um that son um, i mean that's the that children's to the school directly but we can we can do it in party to relationship, but not in the group. In the group, it was like the relationship between the household and the school, not with the individual person and the school. Is this how it works um, in in party to relationship group? I mean, so may, we you, we may be using the term group in a different way to each mm -hmm. other. So in okay. uh, in MPC. What I know as groups are the groups mm -hmm. that are part of the program management side of things. So you might run okay. Okay. Uh, a weekly group of people who, you know, workshop on. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or they're part of a cohort of, of people. Um, but yeah, you, you would, you know, if, if Vanessa if Vanessa was at university, you'd add that as a, a relationship here mm -hmm. and have mm -hmm. as, as the, the thing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've got Nidhi as well, and then we'll try to get to as many Q and A questions in the chat as we can. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Go ahead, Nidhi. Hey, hi, hi, Nicole. Hi, Taylor. Uh, hi. Thanks for having me up. Uh, yeah. So my question was like, uh, when you said uh, NPSP is still going to be around while NPC is introduced to uh, get the platform capabilities into use. Uh, so yeah. does that mean the NPSP does not really have those kind of platform capabilities already there? That's why NPC is better there? Um, that is my understanding. Now, I say that is my understanding because I'm not deeply technical, right? So okay. 
in when we whenever I've worked on with with MPSP in the past, I've never played with the data processing engine or Omni scripts or you know things like that. Right? I don't know why that they wouldn't be available. Like I don't understand the, the beyond the, the the you know the, the Salesforce layers of, of cleverness. I don't get below the first sec you know first second <laughs> layer. Um, but that that is the under that is the, the rationale I've been given. Yeah. I wanted to ask you on a, on that follow up. Uh, like you know when we give donation, right? Uh, if you are working with an organization, uh, say, suppose you donate to a cause and your organization matches it up. So how will that relationship be captured here? Because uh, say, suppose I donate to St. Jude's uh, $2,000 because uh, my organization would also match that up or will do a higher donation than what I have done. So in that case, um, my organization is not my family, but I work there as an employee, right? Yeah. So, so you can you can add a relationship. So I create the account sales fix. You can um, add in here the employee if you know when they start and finish, um, etc. Right. So you can have that relationship, and then if Salesforce makes sorry sales fix makes a donation. Uh, Vanessa would get that soft credit, right? Her so soft crediting is all about the influence that somebody has. The only reason Salesforce made that donation was because Vanessa has that connection. So she's kind of like credited by influencing that opportunity. Uh, okay. And does that mean that uh, when I see here campaigns? So does that mean that it is in some way related or synonymous to marketing or, you know, sales kind of uh, activity where you use campaigns uh, to generate? Because uh, there are organizations those run fundraising uh, uh, campaigns on behalf of other organizations. There are schools who uh, raise fundraise for their own uh, things schools and educational institutes so in that case there are two questions one is like the organizations that are on uh, running uh, campaigns for fundraising on behalf of it which which one will they use nsps or npc and okay. uh, then really uh, there are educational institutes who use uh, who also raise funds or you know who do take donations so will they be using education cloud there or will they be using non-profit because that's a good question so this is one of the reasons <laughs> this is one of the reasons why and um, they've they've gone to this point because in the old days right if you were a school or a university you'd have education cloud for managing your students and then you'd need to have non-profit success pack to manage your fundraising and the two didn't talk to each other now and it's not quite there yet but it's getting there this is one of the reasons they've done this now education cloud and non-profit cloud use the same data model and are on the same platform so you can have one sales or solution not two but still you will have to uh, and uh, i have both the clouds right you need to have a non-profit cloud and an education cloud both there then they can correlate, right? It's not yes. a, you know, you, you yes. have to go for both the subscriptions, right? And similarly, at the, at, is... at the moment, who knows what the, the roadmap is? Like in a few years' time, we might go, ah, oh, that's what they were planning for, right? By doing all of this change. Yeah, and similarly for a uh, similar example for health cloud, right? Health yes. care uh, institutions, taking donations or raising funds will have health cloud plus non-profit cloud is yes. what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> bearing with me. Thanks so much. Yeah. No worries. <clears throat> okay. Well, we'll try to get through as much of the Q and A as we can. We've only got like six minutes left. Yeah. Um, so let's try. What are the best practices when you integrate Stripe or PayPal? Don't. <laughs> no, <good. laughs> this is exactly what I mean, right? Don't. Why would you worry about into so so um the where's 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 the thing where's the thing oh, do, 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 do. oh there we go 
So back to my architecture, which I know is pretty pathetic, not, not what you learn to do at Click. So there's no Stripe here. There's no PayPal here because Raisley is the one doing the talking to those solutions. So there's no need to integrate to those things. So just don't do it. Easy. Good one. Uh, in MPC, can a contact record exist without an associated household? It's not, it's not a valid question because they're person accounts. They are one and the same. They are that smooshing of account and contact together, which most people over the last 10 years have gone, oh, I hate that, but it's it's now a thing. What no, are the I... options available <laughs> to track volunteers? There aren't any, and I'm not seeing it on a roadmap, and Volunteers for Salesforce does not work with nonprofit cloud. So there is another app called, oh, come on, brain. It, it It's a paid app. Oh, fire. I can't think what it's called. I'll have to Google. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a paid app um, that manages volunteers and provides a portal and login stuff built on the platform. But, um, yeah, not volunteers for Salesforce. Um, have you created some of the NPC functionality in NPSP, like donor temperature gauge, interest category, or favorite program? Is there anything in NPC that feels clever or not? <laughs> um, not yet. Haven't gone backwards. Haven't taken NPC stuff and put it in NPSP. Um, might do that. Um, is there anything in NPC that feels clever or novel? I think there's some stuff that's certainly interesting, like particularly that's coming. And I think this is what I'm seeing, right, is that this is setting the ground rock, the, the foundations for what is coming. So um, MPSP will not have all of those clever AI predictive things built into it. Um, NPC will. Um, document generation, uh, receipting, for donations in particular, uh, or invoices for services delivered. You used to have to use something like Conga um, to produce those. That can get quite expensive for not-for-profits. You view generating 10,000 receipts every month. That's a lot of that's a lot of Conga dollars, right? Um, MPC has a document generating feature built into it. It has limitations, um, and it's a lot harder to work with than Conga at the moment. Um, but things for the future, right? Um, Rohan says he found this trail mix. Do you recommend any other trainings? Um, if you have any other recommendations, if you want to drop them in Slack, that might be easier. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, Henry, I'm not sure this question makes sense. I think you may have asked it earlier. What type of field displays the score? And uh, how is it that's, this, that's this one here, right? This overall score, I think. So these, these one, two, three, four fields, link, interest, ability, and score are ones that we've added. So this is just from our knowledge of not-for-profits. These definitions are taken from a website of sort of best practice major donor management. Um, each one of these pick list values has an associated score, one, two, three, four, five. This is a formula field that just adds them up. Uh, Diego is asking, is it recommended to activate person accounts or should it enough with the household accounts created after create a contact? Um, so you have no choice with, with MPC. It is person counts. It's just, that, it just is. Um, just how it is. Last question. Um, hey, Nicole, if you're able, can you please explain or point in the right direction best practices on loading and mapping new data? So getting data into MPSP or getting data from MPSP to nonprofit cloud? Oh, I think, I I'm not sure. Think uh, Lola, do you want to clarify that? I'm not sure which one she's. Into NPSP. Into MPSP. Uh, no, but there are some good trailheads and other things that I can put in. Like I do, but not right now. I'll put it in Slack. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, thanks. Wow, guys, that was like rapid fire. <laughs> Are you okay? You made it. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like this is a super informative session. We got a lot out of it. Um, what about you guys? Did you get a lot out of it? Well, show me some emojis. Oh, we've got all the claps on the bottom. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, Nicole, um, for everything you've done here today. She will drop some of those um, in the Slack channel, those responses that we said we'd see over there. Um, as always, guys, this has been recorded. I will put the, the link to the recording over there as well. If you want to watch it again, I'm sure you can pick up even more information the second or third pass through. Uh, and we will see you all again soon. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Yeah, bye.